In our last episode, we explored the tanker at the San Francisco Wharf. We learned that it was called the PMV Valdez. And we learned that the Enclave main base is actually a pre-war Poseidon oil rig. The PMV Valdez is the only vehicle that can approach the oil rig without being fired upon by the Enclave. We used the key fob that we got at Navarro to install the NavCop chip that we got at Vault 13, but now we just need to get some fuel for the tanker. Lo Chow at the Flying Dragon 8 said that the she might have some tanker fuel. Maybe we can work with the nearby Hubologists to steal the tanker fuel from the she. To find the Hubologists, we pass through the northeastern exit grid from downtown San Francisco. We arrive on the Golden Gate Bridge, and lying on the bridge is a huge vehicle. It appears to be some sort of space shuttle. Standing next to it is a man in a lab coat. Hey, raw meat, he says. Who are you? What are you doing here? Who are you, we can ask, and what are you doing here? And he says, I'm Harry. I'm the chief rocket technician. Well, I'm Oxhorn, we can say, and I'm just looking around. You're not one of the brethren, he says, and you're therefore not authorized to be here, unless you're planning on joining us, which you may do by expressing your interest to AHS-7, who's at the guard post. Now either get downstairs or get out of here. We see a spiral staircase next to the exit grid, but before going down, we can talk with the other man standing next to this shuttle. How can I help you, he says. Who are you, we can ask. And he says, I'm Dave Handy. I'm down from Canada. What brought you down here, we can ask. Promise not to laugh, he says. Okay, we can say. And he says, the hub recruiter, Vicky Goldman. I saw one of her movies up in Canada, and I just knew that she'd fall in love with me. It hasn't happened yet, but I'm working on it. And apparently the chosen one is familiar with the name Vicky Goldman because we find an option for him to say... Ha <laughs> ha! What a schlep you are! She's a porn star, buddy! She doesn't watch you! Well, yeah, he says, but it's worth it in case something happens. He has that same response to all of our options there. So what do you do here, we can ask? I show these guys how to move their data, and I answer stupid questions all day long. What sort of stupid questions, we can ask? And he says, oh, like, does my terminal have 3D card support? Stuff like that. And I'm assuming the answer is no, since all of the terminals and terminal games we have access to in the Wasteland are two-dimensional. Well, we can say, you want me to talk Vicky up for you? Oh, no, no, he says. I'd be too embarrassed. Fine, fine, we can say. Hey, Dave, would you be able to hack into the she database, we can ask? And he says, I should be able to, but only if you have a specific task in mind. Well, you could divert fuel into the Poseidon tanker, we can ask. And he says, I could do that, but I'd need a good reason to do it. And I just don't have that. Sorry. So it looks like Dave Handy here can help us. But we need to give him a good reason to do so first. Nearby, we find two herbologist guards. Go on about your business, they say. Consume. Sleep. The Starfather cares for you. That's why he gave you us. We can take another look at this rocket. Good grief. It's huge. It couldn't have been made by the Hubologists. It must have been a pre-war rocket. So this is what America was using to explore the stars. It must have been a shuttle like this that brought America to the moon. I'm curious about the logistics of how the Hubologists got this here. San Francisco isn't really well known for its thriving space exploration industry. Even modern space exploration companies on the West Coast, like SpaceX, still launch from the East Coast. And we know from the events of Broken Steel that the mobile base crawler, which was originally a space shuttle orbiter mobile platform before the war, was on the East Coast. Pre-war America probably used this thing for military purposes before the war, but how the Hubologists got this to the Golden Gate Bridge without fuel remains a mystery. The Golden Gate Bridge is destroyed from here on out, so to continue we need to head down the spiral staircase near the exit grid. We arrive in the bowels of a pre-war bridge maintenance complex, which now serves as the Hubologists' headquarters. The path allowing access to the facility is blocked off with a force field, and it's surrounded by two guards. 
Don't bother those who try to focus. We have your best interests at heart. Near to the spiral staircase, we see a man in a gray robe. You, state your business, he says. I'd like to look around, we can ask. And he says, this is not a place that is open for random tours. Good day. Or we can say, who are you? And he says, I am AHS-7, the second in command of this facility. Before you ask, AHS stands for Aligned Hub Seeker, which means that I have cleared seven levels of Neurodynes from my spirit. This means that I am more enlightened and closer to the hub of the Great Wheel than you. And this means that you will tell me what you want here. Now, we can say, I'm interested in potentially joining your group. And AHS-7 says, excellent, go in, go in. Speak to Juan Cruz and Vicky Goldman. They're celebrities, you know, but they'll talk to you. We can say, ooh, celebrities. Or we can say, who are they? And he says, they're stars from New Reno. They heard the truth behind our gospel and came to cleanse their neurodynes. Where do I find them, we can ask? And he says, you can find them in the prayer room, showing all our new recruits and the raw meat just how rewarding it is to be a herbologist. Well, let me at them, we can say. Alternatively, if we have the letter with us that we got from the self-proclaimed enlightened one at the church in NCR, we can tell AHS-7 here that we have a letter for AHS-9 from the enlightened one in NCR. And he says, very well. Be quick though, he's a busy, busy man. Either way, he opens the force fields and allows us to explore further. There are rooms to the left and right of the spiral staircase. They have computers and desks inside, but everything's inaccessible and empty. Going through the force fields immediately to the right, we find a storage room with a guard inside. Your presence is welcome. Over there, he says. The boxes in here are empty and we can't interact with the terminal. So heading back out to the hallway, we see that we can go one of two ways. Northwest, down a long hallway, or northeast through a deactivated barrier. Going down the hallway ends at a barracks. We find three bunk beds, a bunch of foot lockers and lockers. The foot lockers are all empty, but the lockers have small goods. The first one has some mute fruit. The second one, oddly enough, has two lit flares. And this is a game glitch. We find these flares lit in every game and they never go out. They are the only flares that act like this in the game. More mute fruit and a combat knife in here. And in the final locker, even more mute fruit. But this room is a dead end, so heading back down the hallway, we can move northeast, only to arrive in yet another hallway with another long pathway going northwest and a hallway moving northeast with lots of other arteries. We'll start by going northeast, passing a door to the left for now. We'll take the hallway furthest to the east. This leads us to a room to the southeast, wherein we find two herbologist guards and a number of tables. Both of the guards say, consume. And we can't interact with any of the tables. Passing through a series of doorways to the west, we arrive in what must be an office space. We find eight office desks and four work tables, all of which are empty. This room connects back to the hallway we came from through a door to the southwest. So this just does a small loop. To continue, we'll head back to this office space and take the doorway to the north. This leads us to a computer room, and inside, we find a scientist. Yeah, he says, what do you want? Who are you, we can ask? And he says, I'm Crockett. I'm a scientist and fix-it guy. Can I get back to it? Crockett, we remember that name. Lo Chow from the Flying Dragon 8 told us that he's a good guy to visit if we want some upgraded gear. Well, what do you do here, Crockett? And he says, I develop new technology and I get my share of cultist tail, if you catch my meaning. Uh, no. What do you mean, we can ask? And he says, these guys don't know real science. I help them justify their extravagance in exchange for some downtime with the ladies and a hefty salary. Well, what new tech have you developed, we can ask? And he says, let's see. I built a nuclear reactor for the spaceship. I created the hardening process for power armor. And I fix things that are broken. So he can harden power armor. Since we're not a member of the Hubologists at the moment, he doesn't offer us his services. Looks like we'll have to come back to Crockett here if we ever decide to join the Hubologists. 
We see a computer mainframe in this room, but we can't access it using any of the terminals nearby. So to continue, we'll pass through the northern door. This leads us to a small empty room with some sleeping bags on the ground. We find a door to the north and a door to the west. The western door brings us into a long snaking hallway. If we follow it north, it rounds a corner, gives us another door to the north, and ends down a hallway with a door to the south. Moving south, we arrive in a cafeteria. There's a bathroom here, an empty kitchen to the northwest, and a new Coca-Cola machine inside that we can use to buy a new Coca-Cola. This is the room we could have accessed had we opened the door before taking the hallway south. And we see that the hallway northwest just wraps around to this very point. So to continue, we'll open the door to the north. This brings us to the Habologist Church. Before moving in to listen to a sermon, we can explore through a doorway to the west. This brings us to another barracks, filled with beds. And we find a ton of footlockers. These actually have things in them. It's nothing terribly interesting, but we'll go through it. Here's everything we find if we choose to loot every locker. A flare, a flower, mute fruit and a rock, more mute fruit, even more mute fruit, another flower, more mute fruit, another flower, three more mute fruit, two more rocks, another rock, a flare, a flare and two more mute fruit, another flower, some money and two pieces of mute fruit, a flower and two rocks, another piece of mute fruit, a flare, some money and a rock, another rock, a crowbar and two more rocks, a flare and another flower, a mute fruit and another flower, another flower, a flower, and more mute fruit. Mute fruit, a flower, and a rock, and another flower. The Sabologists really like their flowers and rocks. We find a room to the north, which I think must be private prayer cubicles. There's a bookshelf in this room where we find two flares and a tool. And near to this is a small theater with a large screen that reads, Pray. That's it for the barracks, so to continue, we'll head back to the church. If we try to talk to the Habologists, they say things like, Don't listen to what scientists tell you. I'm waiting to hear AHS-9 speak again. Only the Hub and AHS-9 have the answer. Praise the Hub! I hope my Neurodynes are alright. I'm still learning the lingo to tell the truth. Standing on the stage on the other side of the podium is a barrel-chested man and a woman who looks like she stepped right out of the cat's paw in New Reno. This must be Juan and Vicky. And as we approach, they begin their sermon. Greetings, new recruits. I'm Vicky Goldman. And I'm Juan Cruz. We're celebrities, as you already know. We think herbology is the way to go. We know herbology is the way to go. I can fry bugs with my brain powers. I look good in tinfoil hats. Maybe if you work hard at optimizing yourself, you can associate with us. We'd certainly like that. Yes, we're always looking for friends. As long as they're willing to optimize themselves. And are as high ranking as we are. We're AHS 5. You can be AHS 5 too someday. If you donate lots of money, you can be AHS-5 even faster. But don't think we only want you for the money. Oh no, we want to help you. And that's what Herbology is all about. With that, the two celebrities leave the stage and stand to the side. If we try to talk with them, they chat to us as a couple. Hi, I'm Juan Cruz. And I'm Vicky Goldman. We're, We're celebrities, celebrities, and we endorse Herbology. Please note that any similarities between us and other people or institutions, living or dead, is entirely coincidental. Similarities, we can ask? What do you mean? Yes, some might think we resemble certain people. But the truth is, it's entirely coincidental. What they're referring to here is that these characters are references to Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. Juan Cruz, Tom Cruise, Vicky Goldman, Nikki Kidman. In the 90s, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman were married. They did a couple of movies together, but more importantly, they were outspoken Scientologists. Well, at least Tom Cruise was, is. And as you've probably figured out by now, the entire religion of Hubology is one big reference to Scientology. 
After Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise got divorced, Nicole Kidman went back to her faith of Catholicism, but as we all know, Tom Cruise remained a staunch Scientologist. One of their, um, prophets, so to speak. What makes you celebrities, we can ask? Why, we were in the movie business in New Reno. We made hundreds of films, many of them classics like Top Bun, Frisky Business, and Days of Rubber. That's what makes us celebrities. Oh, God. <laughs> just, this is, of course, a reference to famous Tom Cruise movies, Top Gun, Risky Business, and Days of Thunder. If the Chosen One wants to be incredibly insulting, he can insinuate that he's never seen any of their films by saying, Oh, well, it's nice to finally put faces to the names. Vicky Goldman responds with a blank, icy look, but Juan Cruz says, Thank you. Shouldn't I make my own choices rather than let celebrities guide me, we can ask? That's very forward-thinking of you. Very enlightened. We offer our opinions to people, and if our celebrity can attract more believers, we're anxious to use it. Or we can say, who cares if you endorse it? Shouldn't I make my own choices? And Vicky says, oh yes, you should definitely make your own choices. And with The Hub's latest book, you can learn how to make the right choice. His latest book, we can ask, but isn't he dead? And their response here is actually a glitch. This dialogue tree puts a response from another question in place of this one. They should respond by Juan saying, dead? Ha <laughs> ha, perhaps. We like to think he aligned all his neurodynes and went to join the Starfather. And then Vicky says, we have extensive use of his jotted notes and barely begun manuscripts to spread the word in the hub. And then Juan says, for example, we found a scrap that said two dozen eggs slash milk slash TP. Obviously, this is significant. It needs to be heard. Hubble was simply crafting a shopping list when he scribbled down two dozen eggs, milk, and TP. But these descendants of his instead believe that it holds some divine significance. Or instead of asking about his book, we can say, make the right choice? Sure, but what about free will? Oh, of course you have your free will. You have the choice to allow your neurodynes to be filled with the filth of the world. You have the choice to live a joyless, meaningless existence in the rat race. Or you, you can, can come, come to, to a, a greater, greater understanding of life through the great wheel. Neurodynes, we can ask, what are they? Neurodynes are the essence of souls destroyed in the Great War, polluting your spiritual essence and guiding you astray. If you want to know more about our teachings, you'll have to join our church. But the chosen one can say, look, I heard this was science fiction, but I didn't know how much. The hub must have been quite a crackpot. You dare call the hub, praises vision, a crackpot? Here? In a stronghold devoted to his study? Get out of here. If you talk to anyone on the way out, you will be attacked, infidel. Good, Good riddance. riddance. We can attack immediately by saying, maybe I'd better jump on them. I always hated your movies anyway. Let's see you do a death scene. If we leave and talk to them again, Juan Cruz says, you made a life-altering decision. And Vicky Goldman says, and sadly, it was the wrong one. Guards, guards! and the Hubologists attack. Instead of joining, we can say, hmm, I think I'll stick with the rat race. That's your prerogative. And I hope you'll understand that you can't be allowed to wander our base. So you had better leave. The guards will probably shoot you if you stick around. Gee, thanks, we can say. Invite me in to recruit me and shoot me if I don't sign up? Nice gig. This is your last chance to change your mind. We'd hate to see anything bad happen to you. Fine, we can say. How do I join? Well, it's very simple, says Juan. We just give you this informational holodisc. You sit through a short movie, and then you go talk to AHS-7. Easy, isn't it? With that, the screen goes black, and we presumably watch the movie that was flickering on that screen in the theater that we found. When we arrive back, that wasn't so bad, was it? Now just go talk to AHS-7, and we'll be comrades in Hubology. I'm so excited. Getting new recruits makes me horny. Oh, honey. Oh, baby. I'll just come back later, says the Chosen One. <clears throat> Porn stars from Reno indeed. 
So now that we've watched the Habologist video on the TV, we need to talk with AHS-7 to become a Habologist. But before we do, we see a hallway to the north on the other side of the podium. This wraps around a corner, and we pass by a guard in front of a large room. Inside, we find AHS-9. You are in the presence of AHS-9, the Great and Terrible. What is it you desire of him? We find a number of options here. We can say, Oh, AHS-9, I come bearing a letter from your agent in NCR. I bow to your glory. Ah, he says, a letter from my field agent. Pity she calls herself the Enlightened One. It shows that she truly is not enlightened. But you have my gratitude. Or we can say, the Enlightened One in NCR wanted me to deliver a letter. She said something about a reward? And he says, a letter from the Enlightened One? Is that what she's calling herself now? Bah! He takes the letter from us. And she promised a reward? You have a reward. My gratitude. Good day. We can say, that's it? Old man, you're dead. But we already know what happens if we anger them. No problem, we can say. I have a question or two, though. But he just says, address your questions to AHS-7. I am AHS-9, the Great and Terrible, and I have many matters on my mind. Trouble me not, meat. If we say you won't answer my questions, you'll answer my weapons. He turns hostile. Feel the wrath of Hubble. So instead, we'd better head off to find AHS-7 so that we can become a Hubologist. There's nothing in his room. The desk is empty. And opening the southern door leads to another room with two more empty bookcases. Continuing south brings us to the room that leads to the hallway we used to go to the cafeteria. So with that, we've explored everything in the Hubologist's base. Since we can't get any farther with AHS-9 or anyone else in the Hubologist headquarters, we've got to head back to the spiral staircase to talk with AHS-7. So, he says, now you've spoken to Juan and Vicky. Are you interested in joining our friends in search for enlightenment to the Great Wheel? If we say, not right now, can I get back to you? He says, do not wait too long before returning with a reply. Your neurodynes will be filled with more and more pollution until we can begin the cleaning process. Or we can say, oh yes, 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 yes. And he smiles. You won't regret this, he says. You may have the run of the compound. Oh, you're a person who knows how to use a weapon? Would you care to use yours in the service of the Great Wheel? Yes, we can say. And he says, the de facto leader of the tanker vagrants is a piece of anti-therapeutic raw meat named Badger. With his death, they will come to understand our position. Will you remove him? And if we want to work with the Hibologists, we can say, I'll do it. Let us know when you have completed your task, he says. I should note here that we can get this quest from both AHS-7 and AHS-9. Now that we're a Hibologist, we can ask AHS-7 some questions. Where can I get fuel for the Poseidon tanker, we can ask. And he says, I understand the Shi have a massive tank of fuel. Maybe you can steal it from them. Where can I find the meaning of all the terms you use, we can ask. And he says, simply use the holodisc Juan and Vicky provided to you and check out the glossary. So when does the spaceship take off, we can ask. And he says, when AHS-9 receives his vision from the hub, we will leave and join him in celestial glory. AHS-7 recommended we read the booklet that Vicky and Juan gave us. And now that we're a good hubologist, we'd better do so. We find the Hubologist teachings on our Pip-Boy, and it's a seven-page document. All right, sit back with something nice to drink. We're in for a story. Welcome to the Hubology Holodisc. Within these electronic pages, you'll find a quick description of our beliefs, including the formerly repressed teachings of the Hub. This Holodisc isn't meant to represent the final word on Hubology. Think of it as a primer, and us as your spiritual guardians. History. We were founded back before the Great Deluge by an author and visionary of great promise, a man named Dick Hubble. He saw the failure of the medicine of that time, and of the failure of religion, and of the failure of government. He knew that the world needed something new. The world needed Hubology. 
Inspired by music of the time and his own personal experience with extraterrestrial beings, he set out to show us wheels in the sky, to keep them burning, and to understand the great wheel of life. We call him the Hub, for it is through him that we understand our place in the wheel. He is our center, and we are his spokes. It is around his teachings that we revolve. With the publication of countless books and journals, the Hub began spreading the word of Hubology, and immediately became a target for his detractors. They called his work pseudoscience and dangerous dribble that can only hurt its adherents. Despite the collected sightings of extraterrestrial vehicles across the globe, they insisted on quashing the Hub's word. We know that they were simply stupid and misguided, but they were powerful. They included governments and corporations and other such entities, keeping the greatest news of all time from the people of the Earth. Hubology was driven underground for a time, marshalling its forces against the attacks of those who envied its simplicity and ease of use for the common man. When at last the Hubologists of that time struck back, they did it in such a way that few could stand against them. They infiltrated the organizations that sought to destroy them and created television shows that sought to expose the lies the government had fed the people. This caused a subtle backlash against our religion. The common man found reason to doubt Hubology because of the distorted teachings of the media. And we had to wage a long campaign against those who would call us crackpots. During this time, sadly, the great hub passed away. Bolstered by the knowledge that the hub had achieved unity with the Starfather, helping to turn the cosmic wheel in our direction, attaining another level of consciousness, we remained confident in ourselves that ours was the true way. Along the way, we gained adherents, many of whom simply wanted to believe that there was a place out there that is better than this world. We offer proof of life on other planets, and a philosophy that allows us to understand the way of the universe. People have come to us over the ages, impressed by the rightness of our minds, and the fact that we have survived the Great Deluge unscathed teaches us that the Great Wheel turns towards our teachings. There are so many parallels here between Hubology and Scientology that I can't stop to point them all out. Dick Hubble, of course, is a reference to L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology, who was also a science fiction author. But moving on, philosophy. Hubology contains a simple philosophy culled from the finest religious and philosophical minds of pre-deluge Earth. We believe that life, the universe, and everything can best be symbolized by a turning wheel. The outer rim of wheel contains those who do not understand our teachings and who do not understand the truth. We call them rim meat, for the wheel turns over them and grinds them, and they do not appreciate its workings. Those who practice Hubology are the spokes of the wheel. We understand the motion of the wheel and do our best to facilitate its turning. Those who control a portion of the wheel are called hubs, and as far as we know, there have been only a few hubs, enlightened individuals who seek to better the lots of their fellow earthlings. We refer to the founder of Hubology as THE Hub, for he is the one with the most correct teaching. In the practice of our religion, we simply apply scientific techniques developed by the Hub and perfected by his inheritors to align the flawed neurodynes that create disharmony and an asymmetrical wheel. This allows us to purify ourselves and prepare us for self-examination. It is only through self-examination that we understand our place in the cosmos and on the Great Wheel. It is only through self-examination that we discover ourselves to be worthy of boarding the fiery rings when they meet us on the planet Quetzal. We think of ourselves as a religion combined with the best scientific technique. Scientific spirituality is what we call it, and what we hope you'll be calling it before too long. This is our creation story. Eons ago, all lived peacefully and in harmony with one another. Body, mind, and spirit were joined in all creatures, and the technology that existed boggled the imaginations. It was a time of peace, creativity, and alignment. And then the dark days came. Thrakazog the Pothole began to teach mind-body dualism and the sundering of the spirit. 
and a war arose. The Great War destroyed souls and bodies and scattered their remnants across the universe. The Great Wheel came close to separating from the axle of existence, its spokes broken in the rut Thrakazog had created. A new life had to arise. And a rise it did, on the planet Terra, as on other planets across the universe. We focus mainly on the life that arose on Terra, for while we believe that we will once again heal the sundered spokes of the wheel with our starry brothers, we must first concentrate on making ourselves useful spokes. This new life was polluted by the soul pieces of the dead. This led to hate and misunderstanding, and wars raged across Terra's surface until one day, a visionary realized that the only way to create peace, understanding, and enlightenment was to cleanse these soul pieces from the spirits of humanity. That visionary was the hub. His cleansing continues today. Small Glossary AHS Aligned Hub Seeker the levels of enlightenment are measured by the cleansing of your neurodimes, cleaning out the base negative energy of your meat and converting it to positive mental energy. When you have achieved a strong enough level of Zetan energy, you can travel to Quetzal, or you can wait and hope that the uplifting will come during your lifetime. Alignment When a neurodyne is polluted and keeps a seeker's Zeta levels down, we align the levels to the universal wheel by running a Zeta scan on the affected neurodyne, cleansing it of taint. Too much alignment too quickly is harmful for the spirit, however. Enlightenment Enlightenment is the state achieved past AHS-9. When the seeker has gained so much knowledge, he becomes an integral part of the Great Wheel and leaves this earthly existence behind. Some of the enlightened remain on Terra to guide the rest of us to a state of grace, to show us how to get behind the wheel of our own lives. Oh, well that explains why AHS-9 was so taken aback when we said that the field agent at NCR referred to herself as an enlightened one. That's apparently a title reserved only for their top members. The Great Wheel. This refers to the cyclical nature of the universe, space, and time. Everything is a part of the Great Wheel. There are some who can take control of the wheel, or perhaps they simply understand the direction in which it travels, and we call them gods, prophets, and visionaries. Those who master the Great Wheel are truly enlightened. Neurodyne. Neurodynes are the stations of the spirit. Ancient religions called them chakras. They can be polluted by soul pieces and negative energy emanating from oppressives. Oppressives. Oppressives are those individuals who are so full of negative energy and polluted soul pieces that they drag down those who seek enlightenment by their very presence. They are to be avoided. Many of them are so polluted they do not recognize the value to be found in a good cleansing. And they do their best to divert the course of the Great Wheel. Quetzal the planet to which the Starfather will bring us when we have become optimized, where we will meet with other starry brethren and join them on their flaming wheels in the sky. Rim Meat A basic person, one who has not yet been aligned to purify his neurodynes. Starfather Some would call the Starfather God. We prefer to think of the Starfather as the universal force from which we draw our energy and to which we feed our energy in turn. Again, a cyclical relationship. The uplifting. The time when the Starfather calls us home to Quetzal, where we will meet our extraterrestrial brethren and move closer to the hub of the Great Wheel. Those who have made an effort to understand and embrace the words of the hub, no matter their AHS levels, will be invited to join the Starfather in the heavens on planet Quetzal. Zeta Scan. Another word for alignment, the Zeta scan helps to purify your neurodynes and clear your spirit. It consists of a machine that runs massive doses of electricity through your skin. This electricity has been carefully formulated to the exact volt to the amount of energy needed to drive the negative energy from a neurodyne. By accepting a Zeta scan, your course is slightly corrected to be more in line with the movement of the wheel. And finally, <sighs> Bibliography. Books by The Hub. There are hundreds and hundreds of books listed here, including such titles as Scientific Spirituality, Battleground Quetzal, Starfather Above, Collected Shopping Lists, Notes and Musings, How to Sue Your Enemies Effectively, How to Create a Cult, and Future Books to Be Written When I'm Dead. 
Battleground Quetzal is a reference to Battlefield Earth, one of the science fiction novels written by L. Ron Hubbard, which was adapted into an awful film in the year 2000, starring John Travolta. And How to Sue Your Enemies Effectively is, of course, a reference to how Sue Happy, the Scientologist church, is in general. Well, this has been one of the most elaborately constructed real-world Easter eggs slash jokes we have yet found in the Fallout franchise. The Hubologists make an appearance in Fallout 4 during the Nuka World DLC. In that DLC, the Hubologists we meet at Nuka World make numerous references to the manual we just read. I covered the Nuka World Hubologists in a dedicated video that you can watch here. Oh, let me start up the Zeta Rays. Neurodynes are locked. I like watching you squirm. Like we need this. And we're done. For now. You'll need many more treatments. New minted AHS4. I remember when I made that rank. Good times. Good times. Now that we're a homologist, everyone else in the headquarters will talk with us too. But before we go back and talk with them all, we might as well go and kill Badger. Heading up the spiral staircase. Before we head that way, we can talk with the scientist in the lab coat next to the shuttle. And he says, I am in need of help, child. Can you help me? Who are you, we can ask. And he says, I am Harry, AHS-5. I am the star brother in charge of the rocket ship. We are going to use it to travel to Quetzal. Well, what are you doing here, we can ask. And he says, what I'm doing here is preparing the ship for the grand trip to the Star Father. We are very close right now. What can I do for you, we can say. And he says, first, we need vertebrate plans to ensure that we've got the aerodynamics right. If you can do this, check with the she or go up to that old base in Navarro. And if we have the vertebrate plans that we got from Navarro, we can say, I have the plans for the vertebrate. And he says, you have the plans? Excellent. Now all we need is fuel. The she have a bunch. See if you can go route some to us. Good luck, recruit. Oh no. So when working for the Hubologists, we have to choose between fueling their ship that'll take them to Quetzal and fueling the tanker which takes us to the Enclave oil rig? Man, what a choice. Well, our first task is to kill Badger, so leaving the Golden Gate Bridge, we can pass through Chinatown and head northwest towards the wharf. We can complete this quest any number of ways. We don't have to personally kill him as long as he dies. So we could use the Shi Assassins to complete this quest, for example. Or we can perform the Shady Sands Shuffle, reverse pickpocket some plastic explosives or dynamite, or just go in guns blazing. Any method will do. With Badger dead, we can leave the wharf, pass through Chinatown, and head northwest back to the Golden Gate Bridge. Then heading down the spiral staircase, we can check in with AHS-7. Have you removed this Badger, he asks? Yes, we can say. He's gone. His people shall embrace the hub, he says. All will be well. You have performed a great service. Is there anything else you need me to do, we can ask? And he says, The oppressive she have been contesting our power and wreaking havoc among our brethren with neurodyne-influencing ways. We believe that if their emperor is killed, they will see the error of their ways. Will you kill the emperor? We can reject these guys if we want, but to work with them, we have to say, Yeah, I'll do it. Let us know when you have completed your task, he says. Now that we're a homologist, we can talk to the people here who have new things to say to us. Heading back to the computer room, now when we talk with Crockett, he says, Okay, now what do you want? So you can upgrade power armor, we can ask? Yeah, I can do that, but what are you willing to trade for it? We can say, I can pay for it. Great, he says, that'll cost you $10,000 straight up. No bartering. I need some new equipment. 10000 bucks, we can say? That's outrageous! I don't have that kind of money, but he just shrugs. You want the armor or not? It's 10,000 flat out. Ah. However, we can instead pass a strength check to say, I'll let you live. But Crockett just looks amused. Are you really threatening me for this, he says. We have a final opportunity to back out, or we can again test our strength and say, yes, do it or die. And if we pass, he looks into our eyes and decides that we're serious. 
Do you have the armor here, he says. And if we have a suit of T-51B in our inventory, we can say yes. Leave it here for a day and I'll do it, he says. Before you go, you ought to know, I've only got the material to do this for two sets of armor. If we try to talk with him again, he says, it's not ready yet. You have to give me time. But if we wait a day or more, the next time we come back to Crockett, he says, I've got it right here for you. Take it, take it. The hardened suit of T-51B power armor has the same bonuses as a traditional suit, plus three to strength and plus 30 to radiation resistance. But it's significantly better when it comes to resistances. Hardening a suit of power armor bumps its damage resistance up from 40 to 50, its laser resistance from 80 to 90, plasma and electrical from 40 to 50, explosives from 50 to 60, and EMP from 500 to 505. It also grants one more DT for each of these resistances. This makes the hardened suit much better than the regular T-51B and only slightly worse than the advanced power armor, that is, the Enclave power armor. Crockett here can harden only two suits of T-51B, and it just so happens that by this time in the game, we have two suits. One that we found at the military base, and the other that we found in the Brotherhood bunker here in San Francisco. We'll go ahead and have him harden the other suit, so that both Sulik and Cassidy are wearing the hardened armor. When we next talk to AHS-9, he says, Have you completed your tasks? Your future and that of the wheel on this planet depend on it. As I said earlier, AHS-9 here can give us the same quests that AHS-7 gave us, and we can turn them into either. Not yet, we can say, but I have some questions first. Yes, my child, he says. When does the spaceship take off, we can ask? And he says, the ESS Quetzal will launch when the stars are right. Oh, so they named the spaceship after the planet Quetzal. Where does all the money we provide go, we can ask? Child, he says, there are some things you are not meant to know for now. And he smiles benignly. Right, so, scam, got it. Heading back to the church, we can talk again with the celebrities. Greetings, Onxhorn. I hope your enlightenment is going well. We do have such large hopes for you. Well, after hearing that, the Chosen One can say, How can I hook up with you guys? And she says, as sad as it is, because the Starfather knows you're a cutie, we probably shouldn't. But we're both flattered. Maybe sometime we can all go to New Reno and make a film together. Wow, so they really are porn stars from New Reno. Oh, all right, says the Chosen One. Well, what else is there to do as a homologist? And Juan says, you could talk to Harry Rocket on the surface. Maybe he needs some help. Or you could talk to AHS-7 or AHS-9. They usually have ideas. Or you could watch the prey screen. Or you could cause mischief amongst the enemies of the wheel. Now, if we talked with Dave Handy, who was standing by the shuttle above ground, we find an option here to talk with Vicky directly. Hey, Vicky, we can say, Dave H. is in love with you. Dave? The computer guy? Ha <laughs> ha, says Juan. What a loser. Vicky is mine, all mine. No way he'll... Excuse me, this is negative energy I'm channeling. I must have fouled my neurodynes. But then Vicky whispers at us. I think Dave is a cutie, but nothing can happen while Juan is around. A moment later, Juan regains his composure. Whew, he says. Neurodyne is all clear again. Then heading topside, we can talk with Dave Handy. Now, I have to note here that I at least found a pretty annoying bug when trying to talk with Dave Handy. If we exhaust his dialogue options before going underground and becoming a member of the Hobologists, then for some reason that locks out our ability to talk with him later. Every time we talk with him, he gives us the same response. So if we want to have the conversation we are about to, it's best to talk with Dave Handy once about Vicky and not explore his other dialogue options, then go underground, talk with Juan and Vicky, become a hobologist, go back to Vicky and mention Dave Handy, then go back topside to get the following conversation. Greetings, enlightened one, says Dave Handy. We have a couple of options here. We can say, I talked to Vicky. She and Juan made fun of you and said you're not a real man. And he sits in stunned silence for a moment. Pain crosses his face. Oh, well, 
he turns his head away. I bet you want to get back at her, says the Chosen One. You bet I do, says Dave Handy. What do you need? We find two options. We can say, I need you to format the Hubologist hard drive. There, he says. Teach these bastards to use and reject me. Goodbye. This hard drive option we find here is confusing because it's not really referenced in any of the quests and if we choose to have him format the hard drive, we really don't know what happens. And indeed, not much happens at all. We do gain karma for convincing him to format the hard drive, but the only change that happens in the game is if we haven't gotten the quest from AHS-9 to kill the Shi Emperor, he can no longer give it to us. But oddly enough, AHS-7 still can. Yeah, I don't understand the connection between those two events at all. But it's still a good thing to do if we want the karma. We can leave at this point or we can say, Well, I was really just kidding. She didn't actually say that. She didn't say that. Oh, good. So I've done all of this harm for nothing. I'm going to kill you now. Try it, we can say. <laughs> and he does, except he runs away. <laughs> Instead of getting him to format the Hubologist hard drive, we can say, I want you to hack into the Xi databases and get some fuel channel to the Poseidon tanker. There, he says, teach these bastards to use and reject me. Goodbye. And that's another way to get the fuel from the Xi. Now, instead of telling him that Vicky and Juan made fun of him, we do find an option here to say, I talked to Vicky. She said you're hot, and she wants you sometime. And Dave Handy says, she did? Really? Wow. A beatific smile slowly crosses his face. Thanks. What can I do for you? However, this time, when we ask him to hack into the Xi databases, all he says is, I'm going to move on Vicky. Um, soon. And then he again asks us what he can help us with. This response doesn't make much sense to me, but the end result is that we have to lie to Dave about what Vicky said in order to get him to steal the fuel for us, which is a somewhat counterintuitive solution to this problem. However, when we ask him to format the Hubologist hard drive, he says, format the hard drive? He says, are you kidding? No way, I can't do that. You see, now he has something to live for. Vicky is interested in him, so he doesn't want to help us. Instead, we've got to convince him or lie to him. It's just a routine cleaning, we can say. I've backed up everything else already. And he says, oh, well, if you've backed everything up, I'll do it. And he taps at the keyboard. There you go. We can again confess the truth and say, I played you for a sucker so long, in which case he attacks, or we can say thank you and walk away. But there are more ways to get fuel for the tanker. So reloading a previous save, we'll explore them next. And with that, we've become a hubologist. We killed Badger. We got two suits of hardened power armor. We discovered a new way to get fuel for the tanker. And now we have to find fuel for their space shuttle, the Quetzal, and assassinate an emperor. We'll do so and explore the Steel Palace and get to understand the Xi in my next episode. I publish many Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss the next one, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you feel like you're still missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop, Enclave. Boast your support for the Enclave and everything they do with this brand new design. This design comes on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find it on other products as well, like smartphone cases, posters, pillows, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.